Turning your passion into a business is one of the most rewarding things you can do. So when I come across a young person that's following their horticultural dreams, all I want to do is catch up, swap notes and chat plants. Harris, I feel like I've died and gone to plant heaven. This place is amazing. Thanks, Mal. How are you? I'm good. So, look, obviously you've always had a passion for plants, but how did all this begin? From my childhood, um, I always loved plants, whether indoor or outdoor, um, and it just further grew travelling around the world and especially uh, moving to Australia. And then finding the tropicals, which were different to more Mediterranean style back in Pakistan. So it's obviously indoor plants that you're drawn to? Um, very tropical, so in Melbourne, um, it has it's to be an very indoor. indoor. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got some favourites you might like to show me? I do, I do, and I would love to show you around. All right, let's go. What amazes me these days is just the range of indoor plants on the market, like things I've never seen before. There's so much pink foliage around. Is that something people are after? Yes, pink, red, white. Very trend at the moment. People just loving it. As you're noticing, Chinese evergreen, Eglonema, a very common plant, uh, becoming very popular because it's very easy to look after. Yeah, imagine having that in your home all year round. It'd be just beautiful. And yes. I imagine that people are using plants like this for a bit of wow factor. They are a very unique plant. It's called Li Koala Elegant, which is a variety of a fan palm. We are climatising it to Melbourne's weather. Uh, it's been with us for last at least nine months, I would say. It's been doing really great. So it's nearly ready to go into someone's home. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure about not that. <laughs> What I love about Harris's collection is that you can find rare, unusual or variegated forms of some of your favourite varieties. So take this for example, this is the good old peace lily, which most of you would be familiar with, but this is a variegated form called domino. It's got lovely splashes of white and green on the foliage. Or if you're more serious about your variegation, check this out. This beauty is called Picasso. There's another great example above me here. So up here we've got the devil's ivy, the common one, if you come down here, this is a variety called Marble Queen. So again, you've sort of got these mottled foliage with colours of cream and green. Then if you want something a little bit more unusual, this is a variety called Manjula, which has really serious splashes of cream, green and silver on the foliage. And over here, the beautiful Raphus palm, which most of you would be familiar with. They call it lady palm. But this one has splashes of gold and green, so it's a Japanese variety. You can imagine just how much impact that would have in the living room. And one of my personal favourites here, this has become the it indoor plant. This is the variegated monstera, and this one is called Thai constellation. So all these little quirks of nature just add something different to the whole living space. You might think of the Hoya as being one of those plants that your grandma grew, but they've made a serious comeback. And I think there's a lot more to the Hoya than you might realise. So when we think of them, we might think of those beautiful waxy flowers. But check out the foliage on some of these varieties. So this one here is called Crimson Princess, which is named for its dark coloured blooms. But the foliage is gorgeous too. It's got gold running through it. It's nice and cascading. Or varieties like this one is Royal Hawaiian. So it's got almost silvery kind of foliage. My personal favourite, a variety called Kerry Eye. Check this out. Look at those big heart-shaped leaves. I'm just a little bit in love with this variety. So here's where you've been hiding the unicorns, huh? <laughs> that is a massive leaf. It's called Philodendron No ID. We just call it for fun because um, it hasn't been classified with any name. And if you go to the Royal Botanical Garden and see it, the leaves are this giant. Really? It's just as it matures, the leaves will just grow bigger and bigger. It's just stunning. Just amazing. And the colour in that foliage. This one is called Black Cardinal. When the leaves comes out, as you can see, they're very dark in colour, hence they're called Black Cardinal. 
Um, and as the leaves turns more mature, you can see the colour turns a bit more greeny on this one. And I'm loving the pink in some of this foliage. This one is called Philodendron White Princess. One you can see has got all white specks on the leaves, whereas this one is actually giving pink specks, which is not common on white princesses. Collectors just love it. I just um, love it. Yeah. And the burgundy here mixed with the pink together. That one is called Pink Princess. As more and more sun hits it, it gives more and more pink variegation. Another spectacular philodendron. Sometimes you just want something original to display your plants in. So what I've done is got some PVC pipe and I'm going to turn it into a hanging planter. So I've started by cutting out these holes here, these little windows in the pipe, just using a compass saw, and that's where I'm going to pop my plants into. Then I've attached a cap on the bottom with a bit of glue and drilled some holes in there for drainage. Then I've put a good plastic primer on there. Now it's just a matter of spraying on some of that flat black paint to give it a nice industrial look. Okay, now that it's all dry, it's ready to be planted. So I've just put it upright to make planting a bit easier. I'm gonna start by putting a little bit of potting mix in the bottom here. Now, because we're hanging this and the PVC pipe already has a little bit of weight to it, it's really important to use a lightweight potting mix. The Scots Indoor Mix is perfect. It's based on coir and sphagnum peat. There's also a bit of perlite in there and some controlled release fertiliser. So it's not only lightweight, but it's tailor-made for growing gorgeous indoor plants, which is exactly what we want. And because it doesn't contain any compost or pine bark, it doesn't shelter the fungus gnats, which is a really good bonus. So now we can get stuck into our planting. So you could fill these holes with the same species and have a nice uniform look, or you could do what I'm doing and just be a bit more eclectic. So I'm using some Calicia Pink Panther for just a nice splash of colour. I've got some silver monstera with beautiful heart-shaped leaves. And then I'm using a, a nice kind of mix, actually, of devil's ivy. And here's a little tip for you. Once you've got the plant in there, just get your hands on some moistened sphagnum moss and just tuck it into the front of that planting pocket. Just helps keep the potting mix and the plant in place. Also helps to keep a bit of moisture in the mix. And in the next one, how about we put this really cute creeping fig with a little bit of variegation. For the top end, I've got a screw cap that'll allow me to access it for maintenance and for feeding. And I've attached a U-bolt to allow us to hang our planter. And when it comes time to feed, it's really simple. So just get your hands on a bottle of this stuff right here. And all you do is pour and feed. So it's a balanced formula that's designed specifically for indoor plants. So all those yummy nutrients will provide beautiful lush green foliage that will fill the hanger out beautifully. There you go. Now, of course, the beauty of PVC pipe is that it comes in different diameters, so you can group them together just like this to create extra impact. And, of course, because you can make these yourself, you can always keep adding to your collection. You never know, it might become your new green obsession. Yeah.